Welcome to Wildrose United and this beloved community who seek to embody the welcome of Jesus. No matter who you are, where you've been, who you love, there is a place here for you. Obviously, I'm not Murray Spear. My name is Linda Ellis, and I'm privileged to be covering for Murray, who is our minister here at Wild Rose United Church. In the sanctuary with me today, providing the service this morning, are Navone and Don McIntosh, Marlene Cole, Noemi Flores, Corinne Saligeno, and Bill Aitken. Wherever you are and however you are accessing our service, whether you're watching on Facebook Live or on YouTube, it would be really meaningful and helpful for us if you could go to the chat or comment section and let us know who you are, maybe where you're watching this from. As we gather here, we acknowledge with respect the history, spirituality, and culture of the Indigenous Peoples of Canada, particularly in our case, the Peoples of Treaty 7, who include the Blackfoot Confederacy, comprising the Siksika, Pekani, and Kainai First Nations, as well as the Tsutina First Nation, and the three nations of the Stony Nakoda, Wesley, Paraspaw, and Chiniki. Calgary is also home to Métis Nation of Alberta, Zone 3. We are all treaty people. We all have work to do in reconciling and healing the broken relationships of centuries. And just before we get started here, I just want to remind you that uh, there's information in the community contact about our reopening in the fall. So please check for details and we'll try and keep you posted as we get closer to September and I look forward to seeing more faces in the sanctuary. Now I'll have Don McIntosh and Maureen Cole come up and do our lighting of the Christ candle and our call to worship. We light the Christ candle as a visual reminder of God's presence within us, a beacon for us on our journey. May we carry a spark of this light with us into the world and share it with anyone who is in need. Please join me in the call to worship. It's based on Psalm 15. Who may enter your tent, O God of all? Those who live with honesty, who work for justice, who never speak ill of a neighbor or exploit the innocent, who trust in the faithful love of the Holy One. They are like green olive trees in God's house. They will not be shaken or moved. Amen. We come to worship knowing that we are loved and valued by God. And we come with the deep pains of anguish, anger, grief, shame, and fear. We're opening the deepest parts of ourselves to God, putting our trust in God, saving embrace. We, are, we can be transformed if we open ourselves up. Let us pray. We come today, O oh God, with all of our weaknesses and fears, as well as our strengths and determination. Guide us to be your eyes and see where our help is needed. Give us the courage and the strength to do what needs to be done. Lift us up with your grace and surround us with your love so that we can be your hands in the world. Amen. You just have to give me a moment. I'm going to go over, grab the peace candle and come back. You don't have to move the camera. I'm challenging the technical staff today because I'm sitting down with the mic. So this peace candle is a tradition that has been passed along from congregation to congregation and has come to us from Murray Spears previous posting at Rundle Memorial United Church in Banff. Peace is characterized not by the absence of conflict, by the presence of justice. Peace is also that state which emerges when those who have much do not have too much, and those who have little do not have too little. When the very old and the very young feel supported and secure, 
parents can feed their children and themselves and all have the opportunity for meaningful work in their community. Let us pray and work for that kind of peace in our world. Time to sing now. Jesus bids us shine, a nice moldy oldie. Voices United, number 585. You're going to be getting an awful lot of me today. That wasn't my intention, but I do have some other volunteers coming in the weeks to come to do some of the other portions of the service. So bear with me today, and I will try to keep things brief and to the point just to help that out. So now I was looking for a book today for family time. There was a Veggie Tales book called This Little Light of Mine, and I was so excited because there was a copy available at the Crowfoot Library, and I rushed to get it, and... Two librarians and I couldn't find it anywhere, even though it had been checked in the week before. Apparently, little kids love these books so much that they pick them up, read them, and then drop them in random corners of a library to be found many weeks later by volunteers. <laughs> so instead, I grabbed If You're Happy and You Know It, because it kind of goes with our scripture today. And I thought, oh, that's cool. I know a song about that. Well, guess what? It's a sing-along book, people. So, yes, I heard the noise. Yes, so in the sanctuary today, I've invited people to do some of the actions that go with this book. Because I'm sitting here at a mic, I'm not going to be jumping up and down or spinning around. But if you want to do this at home, especially in little kids or your older kids, big adults who know this song, feel free to. Are you feeling happy today? Join me and my friends for some sing-along fun. So first we have a monkey. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Okay, who's next? Oh, it's his friend, the elephant. If you're happy and you know it, stamp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stamp your feet. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, stamp your feet. Who's next? Oh, well, this makes sense. A giraffe. If you're happy and you know it, nod your head. If you're happy and you know it, nod your head. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, nod your head. Who's next? Oh, it's a lion. If you're happy and you know it, roar out loud. If you're happy and you know it, roar out loud. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, roar out loud. Roar! Okay. Ooh. This is a lemur. If you're happy and you know it's been around. If you're happy and you know it's been around. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it's been around. Yeah, I don't think I should do that. I'll knock the mic over. Oh, here's a hippo. Oh, it's a mom and a baby hippo. If you're happy and you know it, go kiss, kiss. If you're happy and you know it, go kiss, kiss. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, go kiss, kiss. Whoa, that looks like some sort of exotic kind of a, hmm, not kind of sure what bird that is. 
If you're happy and you know it, flap your wings. If you're happy and you know it, flap your wings. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, flap your wings, or in your case, arms. Ooh, little mouse, whoo, look at him, he's got a, looks like he got himself a little treat there. If you're happy and you know it, go ski squeak, squeak, squeak. If you're happy and you know it, go ski squeak. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, go ski squeak, squeak, squeak. Well, look at that. That's the weirdest looking frog I've ever seen. If you're happy and you know it, jump around. If you're happy and you know it, jump around. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, jump around. Oh my goodness, look at all the friends got together. So, uh oh, here we go. This is going to be a big test for all of us. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands, stamp your feet, nod your head, roar out loud, spin around. Go kiss, kiss, flap your arms, go squeak, squeak, jump around. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, shout, we are. I know sometimes it's hard, you're not always happy, but I'll tell you right now, having people sing along with a silly song in sanctuary, I tell you right now, all the smiles get bigger in this room. But you know, if you're really not happy and you're really having trouble, make sure you talk to somebody. Talk to an owl that you trust. Talk to someone and let them know. Because you're never alone, but you need to talk to someone and share your feelings. And that goes for the adults out there too. So now, Noemi is going to read our scripture for us. Upon seeing the crowds, Jesus went up a mountain. Jesus sat down and the disciples drew near. Jesus taught them, saying, Happy are the people who are hopeless, because the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Happy are the people who grieve, because they will be made glad. Happy are the people who are humble, because they will inherit the earth. Happy are the people who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness, because they will be fed until they are full. Happy are the people who show mercy, because they will me receive mercy. Happy are the people who have pure hearts because they will see God. Happy are the people who make peace because they will be called God's children. Happy are the people who, who lives are har harassed because they are righteous because the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Happy are you when people insult you and harass you and speak all kinds of bad and false things about you, all because of me. Be full of joy and be glad because you have a great reward in heaven. In the same way, people harass the prophets who came before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its saltiness, how will it become salty again? It is, God for, it is good for nothing except to be thrown away and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city on top of a hill can't be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it in, under a basket. Instead, instead, they will put it on top of a lampstand and it will shine on all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before people so they can see the good things that you, you do and praise your creator who is in heaven. You are the light of the world. A city on top of a hill can't be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. In the same way, let your light shine before people so they can see the good things you do and praise your creator who is in heaven. The trustworthy words of God, faithful people. The divine word is the day. Amen. Thank you, Noemi. So, uh, confession and explanation. So I'm sitting down today because I really have not been feeling well. I had a really rough day yesterday and I wasn't sure I was going to make it. So <clears throat> my apologies to the technical crew for you know, challenging them this morning. But I figure it's probably better if I sit here rather than keel over. <laughs> 
I can remember our Sundays back in the church when we'd have to call the ambulance on a hot day, so I don't, I don't want to be one of those people today. So the message today was, the scripture was really interesting because uh, I love getting scripture passages that talk about like letting a light shine out in the world. Because I'll let you know, I don't know about the rest of you, but I've had some pretty tough conversations with people lately. Now we've been through a lot during this pandemic, but now you add to it that we're all cooking <laughs> in our homes. It's been really hot. It's been smoky. And, and now the government is going to take away things that, some of the things that our doctors are really upset about now protesting about with the contact tracing and uh, isolation and testing. And you know, just when you think things are starting to open up and get better, but we see more of these Delta variant cases coming, even people who have pretty decent coping skills, I find are struggling a little. Uh, maybe they're just not sleeping as good as they used to, or maybe their fuses are just a tiny bit shorter. But I've also seen that uh, anyone who had any kind of mental health issues before is now way worse. Um, I had a conversation with a friend, I have a manic depressive friend, who is finally coming out of a long depressive phase, and, and oh, it was a tough conversation, and it's hard to know sometimes what to do to help people. Now, I'm usually very positive. In fact, you know, if I was on a menu, um, I, I'm, I'm not crazy positive. I'm not Rebecca of Sunny Book Farm. Everything is rosy, you know, life is grand and wonderful all the time. I would be, the order would be a realist with a side order of optimism. That would be me. I'm realistic about things, but I tend to lean more on the positive side. I try, try to see the good in everything. But even I've had some struggles lately. And I'm thinking, well, if I'm having a tough time, hmm. I think maybe a few other people might be too. Now, I've had a tough time this week because I have one seriously, seriously sick kitty, and I'm trying to nurse her through to keep her on this side of the pearly gate so I can get her the, what she needs to have done. And then I myself got really sick in the last couple of days, and I thought, I can't be sick. I have a sick kitty. Yes, I know. Some, sometimes my brain works in a mysterious way. And then I also spent a lot of time with a friend who tends to slip in out of depression this week. And again, I was trying to help as best I could, and I realized sometimes there's not a lot you can do except just be there. Sometimes all somebody needs is someone to listen to them. I think what happens a lot, because both of these friends I'm, I'm referring to live alone. And I live alone too, but at least I have pets, but they live alone, and I think they spend way too much time inside their own heads. If you don't have anyone as a sounding board, it's pretty easy to start getting into these thought cycles and going around and around and slowly going down a depression drain or an anxiety drain. I think it can be really hard. And I've discovered now that um, I go walking with one of these people regularly and the fact that she has someone to talk to on a more constant basis during the week is already starting to lift her spirits because instead of just reverberating around in her own heads or her own thoughts and worries and anxieties she's now able to get out of that space and I think that's sometimes half the trouble so sometimes I think the best thing you can do for people is just to be there um, be a distraction try and get them out of that little cycle that they're trapped in it isn't always going to work, but it certainly can help. I know a lot of people are anxious about coming back to church, for example. And I realize that some people think we might be opening too slow. Some people think we might be jumping the gun. I, I don't know where you stand, but we are going to be cautious about this. And I think it's important that we try and get back in this place together as a community because that kind of support is what's going to help everybody's mental health going forward. Just seeing people connecting with people, even if we're not hugging at first, just having a conversation from someone six feet apart that you haven't seen for a long time. Seeing a smile on someone's face minus a mask sometimes can make a bi big difference too. So this is kind of stuff that's been rolling around in my head this week, and I had a different message in mind when I'd started the week, but 
everything just kind of happened and that's what happens life just changes gears and you start going down a path and suddenly you're got yep you have to dig a detour even on the way here this morning i had to go around a nasty accident one of those broad daylight good road conditions intersection accidents that should never happen but i suspect someone wasn't paying attention luckily though two cars were seriously damaged but I saw both drivers out talking to the emergency personnel, so, no, and no ambulances were around. So yay, that's a good thing. But again, that's another, anything like that that happens right now you have to deal with, even though we're coming out of the pandemic, all of the processes and stuff, everything moves slowly. Everything you need to get fixed, everything you need to get looked at, and I'm finding people getting really frustrated with that too. It's, I think people are having a tough time trying to find the light at the end of the tunnel. So I remembered way back in the fall, I did a message about being positive during the pandemic and I was talking about things to do. And I was also, when I was looking at that book, if you're happy, you know it, I thought, how do you talk to kids about being happy? And believe it or not, I found a lot of stuff about gratitude. Now, when you're really down and out and you're having a tough time, it's hard to find things to be grateful for. I get that. When things are that bad, that's when you really need someone to step in who, like professional help. But for most of us who are just struggling on some level during this time, I think remembering what you're grateful for, Having those moments when you stop and have a little, make a little list for your, the gratitudes you have in life, or even just setting a little time aside every day just to focus on some positive thoughts and try and get yourself out of the negative thought cycle, negative self-talk. It's something you actually have to consciously do. And I'm not going to stand here and say, oh, piece of cake, everybody can do it, no problem. Because, like I said, even this week, myself, I have struggled. I have lost sleep, and I've had a tough time, and I'm usually very upbeat and very positive and very strong. But this, this situation that we've been in has gone on for like a year and a half, and I think even the toughest people among us are getting a little worn down. And... Uh, Probably one of the best things you could probably do is not watch too much of the news. Now that the Olympics are coming to a close, <laughs> and we're going to be getting back into the other news stories, it might be time to start switching and watching something else. I've got to admit, the Olympics, though, have definitely been one of those sparks in the last couple of weeks. And no offense to the guys out there, but especially the Canadian women. I didn't get to watch the soccer match, but I came home and watched the highlights of the penalty kicks. That was awesome. There's been some amazing moments and some amazing stories too. Our athletes that didn't even make the podium, a lot of them sent, they made Canadian records, personal best times, personal best distances. It was a lot for us to be proud of. And it did give us a little distraction for a while. But I even heard a comment yesterday, well, from someone, no, now the Olympics are over, now what are you going to do for fun? And this distresses me a great deal. I think one of the things we need to focus on around here and everywhere going forward is mental health. There's a fundraising campaign on right now for the Alberta Children's Hospital where they're trying to raise funds to build a child and youth mental health facility, and I think that's amazing. Because I have spent time in the mental health unit at the children's. I used to go, well, except last year, every year I go with the chaplains and a group of staff members. We form a little choir, call ourselves the Festival of Lights, and we go and sing all over the children's. And we do one day just before Christmas, we go around the units. And I've spent time in that mental health unit uh, singing for kids. When you meet a nine-year-old that's tried to commit suicide, 10-year-olds that are cutting themselves, it's staggering as an adult to look that and and try to wrap your head around it interestingly enough though singing songs to these kids does bring a few smiles to their faces and some of them even make requests so I'm a firm believer that music is one of the great ways to raise spirits and according to Winnie the Pooh too you don't ever want to see anybody get you know 
discouraged by giving them a balloon, but I don't know if balloons are always the answer. I just know that we need to do something. The, there have been more suicides and more overdoses, and I just got a notification this morning that a staff member I know had one of her kids found dead at home. So this is partly why my message is going this way today. I'm just thinking that we're still so, we're still so in this crisis moment, we still need to focus hard on mental health. And I don't, and I get the, I sort of feel like I'm going kind of negative on this, and I don't want to be. I want to try and find ways to be positive. So like I said, my prescription is spend a little time every day saying kind things to yourself. Get outside when it's not smoking and commune with nature a little bit. Make sure you have someone you can talk to. And make sure that if you know someone who lives alone, that, they have, that you reach out to them and they have someone they connect with. Breaking our connections with each other is one of the things that is making this tough. I'm excited today because I get to take my mom out of her long-term care facility for the first time since March 8th, 2020. And uh, I uh, hope I can remember how to get her in my vehicle. It's been so long. She has been blissfully unaffected by this in many ways. My mom has Alzheimer's, and she's a super happy-go-lucky person. Nothing phases her. She doesn't get mad. She's just, everything is fine and lovely. But then she doesn't even remember what day of the week is. She, you know, I could see her yesterday or a week before, and she's just always happy to see me. And she doesn't seem to notice the passage of time like the rest of us, which is great. So, but I'm excited, and the rest of the family is to take her out today. And we had big birthdays in my family last year, and we're going to celebrate them all at once today. One big happy family situation, you know, get us all together, celebrate. We're all vaccinated. We're going to see each other, hug each other for the first time in over like a year and a half. Wow. That's going to keep me going for a while. It's going to probably negate some of the unfortunate things that have been going on in my world this week. What kind of things do you think you can do to try and make your make this a, an easier time to get through? Baby steps, little things. Like anytime you want to tackle a big project, let's say you have a cluttered basement, start in one corner. Don't try and do a bite off everything at once. Same with moving forward in this pandemic and trying to stay positive. I know it's it's not an easy task. And I'm hoping that next week I can give you a bit more of a focus message, but today I just, this is weighing on my mind. I, I want to find out ways to help people, to get them through this, to get them back on the other side, and to be happy enough to sing that, you know, like the little book said for the kids, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. I want to see people clapping their hands. I want to see them jumping around, spinning, stamping their feet in joy. And the way we do this is together. You don't get through this by yourself. You never will. I mean, God's watching over all of us, but we have to watch over each other. And that's the bottom line. And there's people who are going to have health crisis and other crises to deal with in the time that's coming up. Just as always, the pandemic hasn't stopped any of that. People still have heart attacks. They still break legs. Things still happen. We need to keep doing for people what we do for them in those situations. Be there for them. Reach out. I know that we've done some pastoral care survey questions and calls to people in the congregation. And I really want to emphasize that we need to make sure we stay in touch with each other. I know there's people in our congregation that are struggling and hurting, and I don't want them left aside in any way, shape, or form. So as I said, this is, this is not the kind of thing I usually say, but it's just been pressing on me all week as I hear people talking about the, 
the negative things all the time and not the positive. We do have a lot to look forward to. We have a, a lot to look forward to. If traveling is your thing, eventually you're going to be doing that. Um, eventually, the, ki like, the kids are having a semi-normal summer. People are outside gathering. People were at the Stampeder game yesterday. It's a shame they lost, but boy, did those people look happy when they were in the stands. A friend of mine who lives uh, in Moose Jaw, I was talking to last night, and she had swore that when things started to open up, she wasn't going to be getting any crowded places. Well, she won tickets to a music festival at the end of August. She's thinking, okay, maybe by then. <laughs> because she misses those kind of things. She misses the community. And she said if, she gets, if it gets too crowded and she gets uncomfortable, she'll just head home. Apparently, it's about three blocks from her place. So if it's like a Calgary music festival, she could probably hear it from her back porch anyway. Find some things to do. There's a lovely Van Gogh exhibit, a virtual Van Gogh exhibit to go to. If you don't want to go out on the side in the smoke, maybe get inspired by a little art. Find yourself a good book to read. Take up a new hobby. Distract yourself from those negative thoughts in, in your head. And see, be kind to yourself. Your present circumstances don't determine where you can go. They only determine where you start. So if we start and head in a positive direction, we're going to end up in a good place together. And I said for me, this is kind of an oddball message. And uh, I guess I just had to get this off my chest and out of my head today because, like I said, it's been a tough week for a lot of people I know. And next week, I'm hoping will be a lot better. Be kind to yourselves. Be kind to each other. And be there. That's really all we can do. That's all I have to say today. So, kind of going along with that, I guess it works right into the next hymn, Come Touch Our Hearts, uh, we're more vices. Uh, hymn number 12, we're going to do the first four verses, and the number, the uh, words will be on the screen as usual. in the sanctuary today. Oh, when we pray together in community, the concerns of each of us, spoken or unspoken, are shared by all of us. Let us pray. God of grace, we know that you are with us in the good times 
the bad times, and everything in between. We have been through so much turmoil and uncertainty in the past year and a half, but there's still more to come. Help guide us through these murky waters. Forgive us when we cannot see another's point of view. Give us strength so that we can reach out with compassion. Open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts so that we can share your abundant love with those around us. Give us wisdom to know when to speak, when to act, and when to be a quiet foundation. Help us stand up for those who cannot stand, speak for those who cannot speak, and be a beacon of light for those whose lives have become dark. And we name before you now, in a time of silent prayer, all who are in our hearts, we pray in silence. As with all things named and unnamed, we trust in your goodness and wisdom and rest easy in your arms of compassion. Amen. We gather these in our prayers, thankful that we may turn to you as to a grandmother who watches over us and pray together as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen now on your screen you will see the many ways you can share your gifts uh, mailing a check sending an e-transfer signing up for pal or Can canada helps any way you can help is much appreciated during this time. And uh, now, Navone is going to present us some lovely music, the prayer dedicated to the memory of Annabelle McLean.
Thank you, Navone. Annabelle McLean was one of those incredible characters. She was actually a seriously decorated athlete in her youth, which explained why she was such a feisty woman in her senior years. And I'll tell you, if you want to learn of an interesting life, you should read her obituary, because she really was remarkable in so many ways. And stubborn and stubborn till the very end. She was delightful, though, had a gigantic heart. And uh, she would have loved that piece of music, Navone. Through the many diverse gifts we are given, may we use all that we are and all that we have to grow acceptance, mercy, and love in the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now join me in ascending forth. Your parts are in yellow. God calls us in quiet moments. Let us listen for God's gentle call. Life is filled with both hardship and blessings. Let us rejoice and weep together as one. God's world needs compassion and grace. Let us offer our good efforts in God's name. As I said earlier in my rambling, slightly fevered message, and again, thank you for hanging in there with me. Be kind to yourselves. Be kind to others. Love and kindness will get us through this. It truly will. May you stay alert, upright, courageous, and bold. And above all, may you do everything with love. And may the grace of our beloved Jesus be with you all. Go forth and shine your light out into the world. Amen. <laughs>